Hello everyone, my name is Jesse and welcome back to another Bakugan review. Today we're going to be reviewing all the main Subterra Bakugan characters. So we're going to look at everything from Season 1 with Gorum all the way to Season 4 with Mectanium Surge with Rockstor. And we're going to go through all of these and uh, give a big in-depth review. Before we get started on the video guys, I do want to remind you that I buy and sell Bakugan. You can check out the links below in the description. You can check out my eBay and Mercari. If you have any business inquiries with me, feel free to email me with the email down below. With that out of the way guys, let's begin. For today's video, we're going to be using a Gorum card right here. Gold Gorum card, good for chaos surprisingly. Um, but it says uh, each Gorum receives an additional G-Power bonus from this card, so we're going to be using this card to open up today's Bakugan. First up on our list, we have a B1 Subterra Gorum. So this is all the way from Season 1. This is Julie's first Guardian Bakugan, and Gorum is probably my favorite, I think, either him or Hammer Gorum. Um... I don't know. A lot of the Subterra Bakugan look the same, but Gorum really set the standard, I think. Um, first off, let's take a look at the ball here. So we've got the usual Subterra, so a tan on like a, a nice like copper, uh, copper like accent colors. Gorum's got a little face here, which I think is really cool. And the face is definitely just like a highlight of who Gorum is. Like you can always identify Gorum that way. He's got these two tiny legs here as well, and that's the only manual parts, which is really, really cool. Um... They're just so tiny, it's interesting. He's got a little hole right here. Uh, I believe that's like a choking hazard thing. And then, of course, his Subterra symbol right there. Uh, but for the most part, that is all the ball form has to show us. Let's go ahead and pop him open. Ooh, there we go. And Gorm here rests at 450 Gs, which for a B1 Bakugan is pretty, pretty good. Overall, I really like the design. You know, you've got his hands here, which are pretty, you know, pretty signature for Gorm there. So his hands there. And just, I like the moss on his shoulders. They really captured it. I'll put some pictures up just to show you, like, the similarities in the show there. So you can see he's got his moss um, on his, like, shoulders and stuff, which is really cool. And, and overall, just how they captured it. Um, however, in the show, he is, like, a darker color scheme um, that they didn't really do for any Subterra Bakugan except, like, the reverse attribute, which is really interesting. Or flipping the attribute colors around. Um, so... Uh, as in terms of Gorum, this is about as accurate as we can get unless someone gets the rare like chocolate Gorum. Um, so yeah, that's Gorum. And then and to close him, you just close his feet right here, and then these two pieces really just close in on each other. Super easy. And that's Gorum. Up next we have Hammer Gorum, which is the evolution of Gorum after he beats Clayf. Uh, the one of the like legendary warrior Bakugan. So Hammer Gorm is essentially just Gorm, but much bigger. And uh, he's got like a nice like pole arm type of thing in the show, which is really cool. Uh, so same thing with uh, regular Gorm that Hammer Gorm has is just the feet pop open. But again, this time they're really big. Um, you kind of get a more almost geo pattern, like it's very square patternized instead of like lines and stuff like regular Gorm, which is interesting. Um, it almost reminds me of like a Mayan type of design for some reason. Uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and pop him open. This is Hammer Gorum, and he rests at 480 Gs, so a little bit more powerful than regular Gorum. And you can see here he's got this cool little like shelf piece that pops open. Um, I believe this is supposed to represent like his uh, like scythe in the show. I'll pull up a picture so you can see it. I um, mean, but he carries around this like polearm scythe thing, which is really cool. However, this time the color scheme changes to match more of this tan on brown, which is um, much more ideal, I think, than like the brown and like orange color. Um, I feel like this ends up becoming the staple and overall just I like it better. I think some people are really nostalgic over the dark brown but for me this just i don't know i feel like it works better i really dig the green on tan um it's just very camouflage and it reminds me of like a very earthen color so i like it much more um hammer also got like a hand here that moves i think this also kind of represents him like grabbing that pole arm um so i don't know this hand can be a little bit annoying but Overall, like, it really adds a lot of character and style to the toy that Gorm just didn't have. And I think this, as I'm talking about it, 
might be my favorite Subterra Bakugan just because of how he looked in the show. He looks so cool. And then this attention to detail is really nice, especially for such an early generation of Bakugan. So to close Hammergorm, again, we just shut the feet right there. And then we push his little scythe in, push his hand in along with these two little pieces right here that cover him up. And then you pop the top right there so it clicks in. And that is Hammergorm. All right, now we are moving on to Nuvastroya. Here we have a translucent Thunder Wilda as part of my collection where I collected all of season two as anime accurate as possible or translucent. So we've got actually a lot to talk about here more than just Thunder Wilda. Um, so I wanna go ahead and jump into it. So first off, as you can see, similar to Hammer Gorm and Gorm, the feet pop open on the bottom here in almost the same exact style. However, we do have a slightly better looking color scheme, especially for this copper color right here. I do prefer it a little better. It's just much more shiny. Um, the translucent on this also looks incredible. Got the subterra symbol there. Pop open that first and then pop out the feet, noted. Um, so yeah, we've seen, we see now that we lose that green color over a yellow, and I'll go ahead and pull up a picture of Wilda here so we can take a look at that, just to compare. I like Wilda more because he flares out so much. He's got like these pieces on top right here that just make him much bigger, which I think is what Subterra Bakugan need. Um, they need to look intimidating. They need to look giant. Uh, so yeah, I really like that. The hands here again, nice and like bulky and big, which is good. Um, and then I really appreciate Thunder Wilda's face. It's just, it's scary, which I think it, it looks like a, like an earth monster, which is good. Um, so Thunder Wilda here sits at 630 Gs. Uh, really nice there. And then I've got regular Wilda. So in the toy line, we never actually saw Wilda. So this is the pre-evolution to what Thunder Wilda is. So this Bakugan evolves into this Bakugan, right? We never actually saw that in the show. All we saw was this Thunder Wilda evolve into a Flare Wilda. Um, which I'll pull up a picture here. This was a prototype. Um, it was never actually released, but it was meant to light up. And for some reason, we don't know why, it was just never released. So we never got a Flare Wilda. Um, but we did get its pre-evolution, which is right here. And personally, I really like it. It comes in at 515 Gs, which is a really odd number. I don't think, you know, you expect it to be such a specific number. Usually they're by tens, not by fives. Um, but I love this design. Um, it, it really accents the yellow, which, you know, the first season got rid of, but it just looks so good. And it also keeps that bulk. Like we don't have feet, which I'm fine with, but man, does it keep that bulk. And look at these hands. They're huge, which is great for Subterra Bakugan. Um, so I actually prefer this one's head more than this one. They, they both look good, but this one just looks more scary to me. Um, so I really, really like Wilda here. And it's also easy to close. All you do is just fold that in and it's it's so easy. Um, so Wilda like that is really nice. And same with this Wilda, like close the feet and then it just all comes in together. It's really nice. And the translucent on these just looks incredible. So really highly recommend collecting these. Usually they go for relatively cheap. Um, so it's just good to have in a collection, I think. Wilda's cool. Up next on the list is Subterra Corridum, which is Jake's Guardian Bakugan in Season 3 Gundalian Invaders. And personally for me, this is when Subterra started getting a little repetitive. Um, so Subterra Corridum, again, we have an interesting color scheme here. Like we keep the tan, but now we've got this darker brown on this orange, which I really like. And I mean, the design itself is really nice. Like it's a very like DNA esque pattern, which I feel like represents a lot of season three. Um, but this is where it starts getting annoying to me. We get this, um, the same exact feet, like, like compared to Wilda's, these are almost the same exact thing. Um, compared to Hammergorum, the feet open the same, which is, it's nice in the sense that there's some similarities, like I like that repetition, but it also starts getting old, especially when you just have multiple the same Bakugan that open the same. And and same thing here when you pop open Corridum, like he pops open very similar to Wilda, like his hands come out. Um, again, of course, a little different, 
Uh, he does rest at, I believe this is 500 Gs. It's a little scuffed right there. It might be a little hard to see. Um, but yeah, so overall, like he's not, he's not bad. He just, again, the, the big hands are cool, but it starts to become the same. Um, but that's not to say Cordum isn't cool because he can deploy battle gear. So let's go ahead and we have to, he's really interesting. So his hands come down, right? And I kind of have to like just close his feet in order for them to even kind of have a chance. Um, cause he doesn't like quite rest on his magnet. So I've had trouble like deciding whether I want his feet open or not because he doesn't quite lock in because um, he kind of floats above it. So it all really just depends. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and put on his battle gear. And so here is his battle gear rock hammer. Now in the show it was copper. I just have the silver version. Um, I wasn't too picky when I when I bought him what, what came with them. But let's go ahead and pop that on. And so yeah, it comes out. It's really cool. Uh, so it's got like this, you know, hammer on here, like this flail spike, as well as like some kind of cool looking saw thing. Uh, so really cool. And then the G power on the back here is 160. So that's really strong. I believe this is, um, yeah, it's Japanese. It's got the magnet guard there. Um, so I don't know why it's so strong. If you were interested, um, the gold version of this has 70. The silver version is supposed to have 60. The copper is supposed to have 70 or 180. I'm not sure why mine has 160. I guess the wiki maybe just didn't get that one. Not not too sure. Um, but yeah, I really like this battle gear. It definitely makes Cordum look stronger and bigger, which is what we want. Um, unfortunately, the battle gear just doesn't it doesn't like fit on him well. It, it works. There we go. That's a little bit better. I don't know. I've always had problems with it, but uh, yeah, really, really cool, and I like it. It just adds so much to them, as with all the other Gundalian and Bakugan. Like, before the battle gear, they just look flat, and then after it's on, it looks so good. <laughs> so to close Rock Hammer, I always just, you know, return this to its place and lock that in, and then it has this little piece you got to watch out for, so make sure you close that in before, like, pushing it in. Sometimes it doesn't lock all the way. There we go. And then this little piece folds in as well, and that goes in, and that closes Rock Hammer. And then to close Cordum, of course, just shut his feet like normal, and then everything just kind of goes up and in. Uh, I always close the face piece first, and then follow that by the back end. Keep that, and then the hands lock everything else into place. And that is Subterra Cordum. <laughs> All right, up next is Subterra Boulderon, which is probably the rarest Subterra Bakugan I have and one of the more rare Bakugans that I own in my collection. Um, super hard to find. I got it from uh, Indonesia. And it didn't take too long to get here either, and I'm just really happy to have him. Unfortunately, it's not diecast, but this is Paige's Guardian Bakugan in the first arc of Mectanium Surge, and it's just really cool. It's got this G-Power wheel here. Um, I can't spin it to like show all of them. I've tried to like, you know, go and, and find each G power. The wiki here states that it has, the Subterra version has uh, 1,250 Gs. I'm not sure if that's meant to be like added up or, or what, because um, I can't like, you know, go in and, and turn them like this. I need something to stick in there, which I don't want to do. Um, but Boulderon's got a couple manual parts, so the feet here, and then this little horn pops out right here, and then he's also got a tail in the back, which you kind of have to leave level so that you can actually deploy the magnet. So let's go and pop him open, and his, his wheel span there, and it's at 560 Gs. And so yeah, this is Subterra Boulderon. And now one cool feature with him is you can actually manipulate his hands, so you can make them kind of stick up, or you can have them uh, stick down like this. Uh, you can also have them lock in like that. So there's a lot of myth manipulation you can do for different battle gear. Um, and you can do that on both sides. So if you want his hands down like this, you can. Otherwise, you can just uh, kind of, you know, lock them up. It's really cool. And then they also lay flat. So lots of different variation here. Um, his color scheme in the show is, is a bit different. You know, I feel like the toy lost a lot of that. I'll go ahead and pull up some pictures here. He does look similar to Wilda in a whole lot of ways. I don't know. In terms of the show, I'm I'm really mixed on it. I just feel like Gorm and Wilda did a way better job. Um, but because Boulderon is just so rare, um, I gotta say he's cool, right? So yeah, here's the a, a look at the back here. Again, more room for, for Baku Nano. So you got one, two, three, four different holes for Baku Nano. It's, it's pretty good. Um, I think that's 
almost as much as Titanium Dragonoid as well. I think Titanium has the most. Um, yeah, here's his, his symbol there. And again, like we just lost so much color. Um, like the only color we have is the silver, the tan, and then the blue eyes, which is just, you know, not as great as the other Subterras. So I do have Boulderon's Baku Nano here, which is Sling Pike. And it is the gold version, which is show accurate. And it deploys by clicking this button here. And it's at 40 Gs right there. And uh, yeah, this is supposed to go on top of Boulder on, so I'm gonna close his horn, and then this rests right on top there. And uh, yeah, it goes right there. So similar to like Cordom's Battle Gear, he's got this cool spiky ball, which you can actually move and manipulate, which is a really nice feature. And I uh, I don't know, I really like it. I like displaying him with it. Um, I kind of like it up because when you do that, it just hides so much of his face, but I'll show another picture of what it looks like in the show as well. It's just supposed to lay over his body like that and sort of protect him. And then it's super easy to close. So you take it off. Gotta be careful. All right. And it just kind of, you just kind of like take it like this and then just boom. And that's it back together. It's super, super easy. Um, for Boulderon, uh, you just close his feet like so. And then his tail in the back. Make sure you shut this so that this clicks together. All that in the back. And then his head and his tail kind of connect. So make sure you shut those together. And then his hands just roll into place. I like to keep everything kind of connected because he does like to pop out in certain ways. I just kind of mush him all together. And that is Subterra Boulderon. Last up, we have Subterra Rockstar, which was Mira's Guardian Bakugan in the second arc of Mectanium Surge. And this is honestly probably the weirdest one I've got. Um, yeah, so we do get some color back. A little bit more than Boulder on. The color scheme is still the same. It's still tan on silver on blue. But we get a little bit more blue features, especially like in this part of the feet here, which I really like. Um, I kind of wish there was something there, but you know. We, we lost a lot. So let's go ahead and pop him open because he doesn't actually have any manual parts until you open him. So this is Rockstore. And we can go ahead and push his hands out because they need to come out. So that's one manual part. And that's honestly, like, initially it. That's all Rockstore is. He's got a tiny little face here. So he's got this little peg here to connect to Aquas Radisson, which I'm still looking for, by the way. Um, and then he forms Betacore as a Baku fusion. And I'll go ahead and pull up a picture here so that you can compare him. He is a little bit better, like he's definitely a completely new design. So he's no longer like a golem, which I really like, but more of like a bug creature, which is much better. Um, just changing it up finally from all these different golems to finally having something different, which is really nice in the show. Um, but he has got some more pieces, so in order to find his um, G power, actually, we have to like lay his feet down. And so he's got 850 Gs here, but his feet come out to help form Betacore with Aquas Radisson. So he can actually stand up and be like a walking... I, he kind of reminds me of like a bottom half of a horse or an ostrich. So yeah, he comes out for that, which is really nice and just adds so much more. I think at this point, Mectanium Surge really got... Uh, into the design and all that, which is cool. Because um, he can totally transform into a completely different Bakugan, which I just really like. I think that's awesome. In order to just put him back, you just literally fold his feet back up and, and swing him up. And it's really easy, and just make sure you get past that one part, and, I mean, you're done. Um, so, yeah, really, really cool. Again, I kind of wish Mectanium Surge did more colors, but it is what it is. Um, overall, I really liked Rockstore. He, uh, he, he was a good one to add to the collection. He's unique. Um, just very strange. So to close them, we just go ahead and put the hands in like this. Now they will flip up like that, but the, the feet here will just kind of like help close them. So yeah. And then that just goes in and just make sure you kind of keep those down. And then this little piece locks everything into place. And that is Subterra Rockstore. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Let me know which Bakugan from this video was your favorite. Who is the best Subterra Bakugan? I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. My name is Jesse. Peace out.